Hello students and welcome to Probability and Statistics for Engineers, also known as Data Collection and Analysis. If you're enrolled in my class, then you're most likely an engineering student, so most of our examples will be geared towards engineering. We have a lot of material to cover today, so let's go ahead and start. If you are a civil engineer designing a highway, you have to predict the amount of traffic that will use the highway. What factors influence that traffic? I want you to think about this question for a little bit as we move on throughout this course. See, in order to predict the amount of traffic that will use your highway, we need to make use of statistics. In short, statistics is the science of data. It deals with the collection, organization, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of data. When we are designing structures such as highways, we typically employ the engineering method, which is an approach to formulating and solving problems of interest to society by the application of scientific principles. In the engineering method, we must first develop a clear description of our problem. We must identify the important factors, propose a model, and conduct an experiment. With the results from our experiment, we go back to our model to refine it. Once our model is complete, we can manipulate the model and use it to confirm our solution and draw conclusions and make recommendations. The engineering method requires the use of data, and this is where statistics comes into play. For example, suppose you want to measure the gas mileage of your car several times. Would you always get the same mileage? Probably not. The difference in your measurements is called variability. We can formally define variability as the difference in results from successive observations of a system. When we incorporate variability into our engineering method, this is called statistical thinking. One way to apply statistical thinking when it comes to different measurements is to look at them as random variables. A random variable can be defined as the sum of a constant and a random disturbance. With every measurement, the constant remains the same, but small changes in the environment, variance in the test equipment, and other differences will change the value of the disturbance. Let's look at another example. Suppose a mechanical engineer is designing a nylon connector for an engine and wants to know the effect of specifying a wall thickness of 3 over 32 inches on the connector pull of force. Eight prototype units are produced and their pull of forces are measured, which gives the following data. If we record these measurements, can we say that there is variability in these measurements? Notice that for most of these measurements, they had different values of pull-off force, which means that there is variability in the measurements. This form of expressing data is called a dot diagram. A dot diagram is useful for small sets of data, up to about 20 measurements. It allows us to identify the location and the scatter or variability, and it can be used to compare different sets of data. Suppose that we now want to compare these measurements to those taken with a different setting for the wall thickness, and we modify our dot diagram to include those new measurements. When we compare these two data sets, could we say that the new red set results in a larger pull-off force? Which of these two sets has the highest scatter? Would testing a third data set provide results consistent with these two data sets? These are questions that we want to answer throughout this course. Part of the reason we take these measurements is to apply them into a population. 
This is called statistical inference. We can define statistical inference formally as the application of the results of a sample to a population. When I say sample, I mean a specific set of measurements, such as the measurements in set 1 and set 2 in our dot diagram. And when I say population, I mean the general cases where the results of this sample will be applied to. For example, if these measurements were for prototypes of the engine setting, the population will refer to all the engines that will be sold. When errors result from statistical inference, we call them sampling errors. And another purpose in this course will be to identify those sampling errors. Now we've covered a lot for today. In our next video, we will continue to introduce statistics and its role in engineering. See you then.